Baby Bump 2, Chapter 18, The Bride-to-Be. A week after your play date with the governor, and your babies meet up with Anna and Elijah shop to start your long day of wedding planning. This is just the first stop of our wedding planning extravaganza. We're getting all of it done today. Is it even possible to plan a whole wedding in a day? Anything is possible. You've got me at your side. Now, if I'm going to make your wedding absolutely perfect, I need to know what you think is the most important element of your special day. Well, that would have to be... <laughs> Justine wails in your arms, squirming, while Ben grabs the clothing on a nearby rack. You take a step back so the clothes are out of reach. No, Ben, those aren't for you. Justine, what's the matter? The ba you bounce her in your arm, and she stops crying and lets out an excited giggle. Okay, crisis averted. Now, what were you saying, Anna? I need to know what the uh, part of your wedding is the most important to you. It could be vows or cake or decor or... Um, I'd say uniting the family. Don't get me wrong, I'm super excited to marry Miles, but this will be the first moment of all four of us to get to come together as an official family, and that means even more to me. I'll be sure to make uh, that extra special just for you. Just then, Elijah comes strolling out of the back of the shop with a wide grin on his face. I found it. The perfect wedding dress. It's definitely this one. I thought that was my decision. If you don't believe me, go ahead and try it on. Hey, uh, you pass off Justine and Ben to Anna, then head back into the dressing room to try on the gorgeous white gown Elijah picked out. As you step out, Anna's jaw drops as tears begin to form in her eyes. Oh my goodness, Jen, you're so beautiful. Uh, that's amazing. I feel like an actual princess. You look stunning. Miles is going to lose his mind if he sees you walk down the aisle in this. Ah, why can't I stop crying? And wipes out her eyes. You smile at her before noticing your little ones are nowhere to be seen. Anna, where are Ben and Justine? Presenting your lovely little flower girl and ring bear. Elijah steps out from the back with the twins in arms. Justine is wearing a cute blue and white dress while Ben is on a little suit. They're just the cutest. I thought you might want to have them on their own special wedding outfits to really complete the picture. Get a total gorgeous wedding dress for yourself or deck out your babies and looks. Hmm. I want Ben and Justine to be as involved in the wedding as they can be. These are perfect for just that. Not to mention, they look like the most precious things on the planet, all dressed up in their little outfits. I knew they'd be ahead. But what do you think about my little, uh, about my dress and our outfits, little ones? That confirms it. This dress is the perfect choice. Elijah, it makes me feel beautiful and elegant and overwhelmed, like I'm really a bride. Stop! I'm gonna start crying again! Even I'm getting misty-eyed over here. I can't wait for Miles to see it, but not until the big day. You change back into your normal clothes while Elijah gets Ben and Justine back into their clothes. As you step back into the room, Anna checks on her phone and gasps. Oh shoot, we need to get going. We're supposed to be Miles at the venue I picked out. You heard the woman. Thanks for your help, Elijah. It's what I do, and good luck. You've got a long day ahead of you. Elijah gives you a wave as Anna, and you rush out of the door with the babies. A short car ride later, you arrive at Covington Manor, where Miles is already waiting in the driveway. You're a sight for sore eyes. You too. Give him a quick kiss and pass Ben over to him. He bounces Ben in his arms a few times, making him giggle. Everyone good here? Anna, why are we at Covington Manor? I thought we were going to the venue. You do know that I'm marrying Miles and not one of the Covingtons, right? This is the venue. Oh, this is awkward. Before you can respond, Anna ushers you and Miles into the backyard, which is already set up with chairs and a makeshift aisle. On second thought, this is pretty nice. You know how I wanted to get married someplace no one ever has been? Well, I wanted to find something similar for you, and I figured this would be perfect since you already have uh, an 
in on with the owner. In Miles at the Twins on the Grass, you can take a look around when Jebediah comes out the back door. Nice to see you, Jim, Miles, and of course, Bin and Justine. Anna already discussed everything with me. You're welcome to use our gardens for your wedding. That's very kind of you, but as you can see, there's ample space for all your guests, and the pagoda is the perfect backdrop for any ceremony. You've got some good points. Well... You turn and spot Justine pulling up grass and bringing it in her mouth. You rush over and snatch it, her up in your arms. Oh no, not the grass. No, Justine, don't eat that. Ben, come back. It's grass. I think she'll be fine. Cats and dogs eat it. Miles quickly picks up Ben as he tugs eagerly on a shrub, then walks back to you, Anna, and Jebediah. Why don't I take care of the little ones so y'all can get some planning done? Thank you, Jebediah. We shouldn't be too long. You and Miles pass Ben and Justine over to Jebediah, and he carries them back into the house. Well, what do you think about this venue? It's wonderful. It's a perfect backdrop for us to say our vows. Don't you agree, Miles? It's nice. Outdoors, part of nature. What more could you want? Pretty sure, because if you don't like it, we can find someplace else. I already picture you walking down the aisle. I'm all for it. In that case, you totally nailed it, Anna. Let's do it. Yay. That means we can move on to picking your wedding theme. Once I've gotten a sense of what you're looking for, I can tackle invitations, food for the reception, and even what your cake will look like. Most people nowadays are going with a big fairy tale weddings or a simple rustic style, but I'm totally open to something non-traditional. Hmm. What were you thinking, Miles? I think rustic. Nothing too big or gaudy. I'm good with whatever you choose, though. I want a non-traditional wedding. Hmm. Like, I'm all for open-mindedness. It depends on what the non-traditional would be. Rustic, though, is... Fairy tale is so over well. Like, it's just blown out of proportion. We'll go with the rustic. I want my wedding to be simple and elegant. Uh, the most, uh, or the focus sh should be on me and Miles, and a mere rustic look is great for them. Knew you'd understand. Perfect, perfect. Now, who's in your wedding party? Because we're going to need to get them all dresses and suits. I was just thinking I'd have Clint. Really? Why is that? Well, when we worked together on the park, he became we became friends. He gives good advice. He's our kid's father, too. It only feels right. That's easy enough. But what about you, Jim? Well, obviously I'll have you, Anna, but other than that, I was thinking of Louisa, since she was one of the first friends in Greystown. And have you uh, thought about your maid of honor? I know wedding, my wedding was a bit of a rush, so you didn't get to do all the traditional stuff, but it's a very important role. No, Anna. Obviously it's you. Oh, I'm so glad you finally asked. Although technically I'll be your matron of honor, since I'm already married. Keep talking like that and I'll end up changing my mind. No, oh, please. This is all I've ever wanted. I'm kidding. There's no one else I'd rather have at my back on my big day. So is there uh, anything else we need to cover here? I'm actually pretty tired. We ain't been sleeping much. I haven't slept in my entire life. Let's fucking do this. <sighs> That's all that's uh, left here, decorations. Now I have two ideas for that. We can go super simple and just highlight the natural beauty of the garden, like you see now, or we can go all out. Exactly how all out are we got talking? The floral accents, as far as the eye can see, if uh, it's there, it'll have a flower on it. And we'll add a beautiful drapery around the columns and arch and ooh, line the aisles with bows on everyone's chairs. Supposed to top it all off, we'll lay out the elegant aisle runner on top of the grass. Listen, you forgot one very important detail. Are we banning Craig? Because that needs to kind of be done. We need kind of like an order against him. Sounds pretty. I do like the sound of flowers and drapes, but I guess I'm just having trouble picturing it. Way ahead of you, sis. I already whipped up a sketch. 
Anna pulls out a sketchbook of her out of her bag and holds it up to you and Miles. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, what do you think? Wow, it looks beautiful, Anna. Get the fancy decorations to help Covington Manor's garden shine and make your wedding day even more special. I need those decorations. It's my wedding day. Well, of course I'm gonna go all out. Good choice, Cassidy. It's gonna look mighty fine. I can't wait to get started. I'll be sure that everything looks absolutely perfect for your big day. This, I swear, is your matron of honor, wedding planner, and of course your sister. Mm, there goes the kids crying again. You immediately swivel towards the house, hearing Ben and Justine's cry ring louder as Jebediah carries them back to you. It seems they want their mother. He passes the little ones to you and you bounce them in your arms as you try and soothe their cries. There, there, you two. We're just wrapping up for the day. We'll be home in no time. But we aren't even close to being done. I thought you said that all that was left was decorations. That was all... That's all that was left here. The three of us still have a ton of decisions to make and places to go. Oh. Justine, Ben, can y'all hang in there for a little bit longer, right? Spend the rest of your day rushing from place to place, starting with the flower shop. It's time for table centerpieces. That's really a thing people do. Now, you can go with traditional roses. We won't, we'll just ignore him, apparently. Modern succulents or uh, avoid flowers altogether and use candles instead. As Anna speaks, you spot Justine making a grab for the stem of a rose. No, those are sharp. Snatch her away from the rose just in time, only to make her start wailing. The piercing noise echoing in your ears. That's when you let a child learn by touching. So, Jim, which centerpiece will it be? Go with candles, succulents, roses, candles. Beautiful and great for adding mood lighting to your reception. Please say we're done now. Or not quite. Next, Anna brings you to Navia and Karen's Bakery, where the two of them lay out three different slices of cake. Our chocolate cake is utterly divine, but if you're looking for something simpler, vanilla can't be beat. Or go wild with strawberry. Not bad. As you sample each of the flavors, you find yourself zoning out as you stare at a coffee pot on the kitchen counter. Then in the corner of your eye, you spot Ben smashing his hand into one of the pieces of cake. Ben, don't. Too late, you watch as he covers his frosting-covered hands down on his pants. I guess we'll just clean that up later. So, which flavor do you want to go with, Jim? Vanilla. Vanilla's a classic for a reason. It just can't be beat. Miles meets your eye across the table and his forehead creases with worry. I'm nearing my lemon, Anna. Can we wrap this up? We just got a few more places to go. Great. I'm already at my limit. I didn't get to really sleep. You soon find yourself down on the street at the dance hall. Ta-da! Welcome to your reception. Wedding reception venue. What do you think? I like it. Brings everything full circle. Barely managed to stifle a yawn as you bounce Ben and Justine in your arms to keep them from crying. Sorry, what was that? I wanted to know what you thought of this place, or this space for your reception. Oh, it's fine. It's fine? That won't do it all. No, that's not what I meant. I'm just tired. This will be great, I'm sure. Phew! Well, now that that's settled, we better keep this train moving. Anna, can we... On our next stop... Oh, for the love of... The next day continues in a whirlwind as you and Miles juggle some decisions and soothing the twins, but finally you make it home. Miles bustles about the kitchen, making dinner while you soothe Ben and Justine, and Anna makes mock-up invitations on the floor. Anna, are you sure this can't wait until tomorrow? No way, I'm almost done, see? The beautiful invitation. I'm so glad you like it. Mm-hmm. Find your eyes starting to slide shut, but you shake your head to fight the urge. Now we just need to come up with a list of people you and Miles want to invite. I mean, obviously, Bao and I will be there, Louisa, Elijah, Clint's family too. The town's council's a bit more difficult. We should probably invite Cassandra since she isn't evil anymore. 
and his voice slowly starts to fade away as you find yourself drifting, only to be startled awake as Justine playfully smacks your cheek. Huh? <laughs> a birdie is a tough one. What do you think, Jen? What do you, uh, do, do you want to invite her? You open your mouth to respond when Ben starts squirming and banging his fists with a loud cry. Don't worry, Ben, I feel the same way right now. What's the matter? I just fed you. Is it your diaper? Hey, Jen, can you grab me another roll of paper towels? One second. Jen, did you hear me? By Verdi, yes or no? I... Justine bursts into tears as one of Ben's hands smacks against her arm. <sighs> as everyone's voices mixes together, all of a sudden it becomes too much to bear. I'm actually not going to collect anything. I'm just going to go with it. I... I... I can't even put into words how done I am. I'm starting to wonder if I'm trying to plan a whole wedding in a day was a bad idea. <gasps> you don't say. You think? Miles rushes in from the kitchen, eyes wide with worry. What's wrong, Jen? Are you okay? No, I'm not. Pick up Ben and Justine and place them in their high chairs before turning back to Ann and Miles. Between juggling the kids, which is a full-time job on its own, not to mention the lack of sleep, I've been trying to stop Craig from demolishing Covington Manor, and now I'm planning a wedding. It's a lot. Oh, Jen, I'm so sorry. I was so excited to help you plan everything that I didn't realize how much I was stressing you out. I should have stepped in more. This isn't on you, Miles. And we're gonna just play it off, basically, as, as it is, apparently. Everything still would have needed to get done. It still does. That settles it. If it's okay with, uh, by you, Jen, I'll take over the rest of the wedding planning for you. Really? Are you sure? Today already gave me a really good sense of what y'all are go looking for. I can definitely handle it. Anna, that's... That's so sweet. I don't know what I'd do without you. That's what sisters are for. Still, I'm so glad you've been here to support me from the beginning. I can't believe I was lucky enough to get the best sister, uh, big sister. Stop it, you're gonna make me cry again? Will you stop crying? But seriously, thanks for that, Anna. It'll be a real help. Don't forget, you were there for me when I was stressing all about my own wedding. You helped uh, make that day perfect for me, and I want to do the same for you. She pulls you in a tight hug, and you eagerly return the embrace. Okay, no more wedding stuff for the rest of the day. You don't need to stress about anything. I've got it all handled. Good, can you now leave so we can all go nap now? Now all I have to do is put the babies to bed. That's bound to be fun. They've been so fussy all day, I'm pretty sure it's gonna take at least an hour to get them to sleep. Jim, I can put them to bed if you're not. No, you're already making dinner. I got this. I bet telling them a story would help. What do you uh, think, you two? <laughs> Remember when we were little and we played pretend and make up all sorts of fantastic tales? Of course, we were pirates and princesses and astronauts and all, all sorts of epic adventures. This will be just like that. We'll be sharing it with Ben and Justine. Help Anna tell a story to the twins for some extra cute bonding time and a chance to make up a fantastic tale. And I pick up the kids and carry them to the nursery where you all get settled and comfortably on the floor. It's been so long since I've done anything like this. I don't even know where to begin. Allow me. Anna clears her throat and displays her hands out in front of her. Your little one's staring at her at all. Do you know what our story is about tonight, you two? <laughs> That's right, it's the story of two sisters. In a beautiful kingdom of Christownia, the princess of the realm, Anna lived with her younger sister, Jen. The two were fair rulers who sought only the best for their land. I truly cannot imagine a better life. You're forgetting a very important detail, Anna. Jen was... the princess, too. I thought that was obvious. I just wanted to make sure that my little ones knew what a beautiful and elegant princess Jen was. <laughs> Though she was nowhere near as wonderful as little princess Justine here. 
or you for that matter, my little prince. The two princesses were inseparable. They spent their days in the castle trying on separate ga different gowns and learning the ways of the court. Shall we have a tea party, Princess Anna? I'd love nothing more, Princess Jen. Then one day the kingdom was struck by a terrible curse. A dark cloud appeared and completely blotted out the sun. Oh no, whatever shall we do? I have heard prophecies about this. There is only one thing that can save us now. Why is she wearing her wedding outfit in the story versus like a gown? The great wizard, Axar, though, created a powerful light, bringing artifact and hid it away in the secret lair. He must find it. What is this artifact? It's a glowing sword, a magical orb, a flashlight. I'm gonna go with magical orb. That's absolutely right, then. The magical item that would save the whole kingdom was a crystal orb. <sighs> it's uh, not eating, though, Justine. It's not for eating. Uh, that'd be a choking hazard. You know, she knows what choking hazard is. The orb Jen spoke of was set to draw on a magical aura and capture it to be able to remove the darkness and restore the light. The sisters set on a journey in search of the magical artifact, and on their way, they befriended a carpenter. Uh, at your service. A scholar. Howdy. And a guy selling castles. I am happy to help. The guy selling castles? That was the best you had? I just couldn't think of a fantasy equivalent of a realtor. Hmm, she has a point. After many days travel, the group finally reached the cave where the object was said to Elaine. We finally made it. And technically she's wearing her wearing were wedding shit too. Careful. It's going to be heavily guarded. As they all snuck forward into the cavern, they came face to face with a massive guard. <gasps> Should be a giant teddy bear. I'd make it into a giant teddy bear. You want to know what the guard looked like, Justine? The guard was a giant two-headed baby. Dog. Snake. Dog. I mean, it is a guard dog. <laughs> the mess of blood and growl as they approach. Lips pulled back in a snarl. <sighs> How are we supposed to defeat that? Never fear, my lady. We will defend you with our lives. Allow us to defeat this creature so we can, so you can obtain the artifact you seek. Or we'll just get eaten. The sisters, three new friends, rushed forward to fight the beast, but its gigantic size, it easily tossed them to the side. It's hopeless. We'll never get through. <laughs> What's the matter, man? I fed you and changed your diaper right before this. <laughs> I think they're worried about the sisters. You smile down at the babies and give them an affectionate kiss on the head. Don't worry, little ones. The story's not over yet. There's still a chance for our heroes to win the day. Back in the cavern. Don't give up hope, Anna. There must be some sort of secret to defeating the boss. We just have to... Cuddle it. Jane knew the creature must have shown little love during its life. She would change that and slowly approach the creature and wrap her arms around it in a warm hug. The creature has suddenly turned into me. You poor dear. You don't have to fight anymore. <laughs> Monster melted away against her, snuggling up close before giving her affectionate nudge toward the back of the cavern. There, the sisters discovered the item they had been looking for. It's humming with power. We did it. The kingdom is saved. 
no one checks on the three friends. With their new friends in tow, the sisters returned home, restoring light to the realm with the help of a magical artifact. And they all lived happily ever after. The end. While the babies, as the story comes to close, their eyes are already drooping, and Justine gives a big yawn. <laughs> you and Anna tucked him into the crib, then returned to the living room, quietly closing the door behind you. Worked like a charm. But what a great idea, Anna. I wonder what adventures the sisters will get up to in the future. We'll just have to wait until the next story to find out. With the kids finally in bed, you and Anna collapse on the couch, exhausted. Well, I'm glad you decided to handle the rest of the wedding. I feel super stressed. Like, pull my hair out levels. And I'm pretty sure every muscle in my body is locked in place. Anna sits up suddenly and grins, shaking the couch. She practically bounces in place. I think I've got the perfect solution. Massage? Like a personal massage? Because there's no way I could afford that. No, silly. Now that I'm officially your matron of honor, get ready to relax because I'm throwing you a killer bachelorette party. What fun does your sister have to up her sleeve for your bachelorette party? Find out in the next chapter of Baby Bum 2. Thank you all for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down to the description below. Links to our social media accounts. Discord, where you can come hang out and join the rest of us. And a few links to support the channel, as well as yours truly. Greatly appreciate it. Gotta keep on the light somehow. And you can always hit the join button as well. It's another way of showing your uh, support to this channel. Because again, you always gotta keep the lights on, and at the very least, afford the internet bill. Let alone, you know pay for content for the channel. Without further ado, thank you all for watching. Catch you all later. Peace out.